We're on. Is it? So we really haven't prepared anything, but the big news of the day is that uh, Malco uh, has closed down their Eagle Grip locking plier. Which with great fanfare in 2017, they bought the factory and the governor came down for the grand opening. They poured millions of dollars and all this R&D into developing these pliers and they were really nice. Yeah, it's, yeah it's, I guess it's worth recapping. Mm -hmm. I mean, so when Vice Grip left the United States, there was this large window where nobody could get a locking plier. And boy, like if you had a US made Irwin Vice Grip, that was just like gold. Mm -hmm. um, and then there was this long period in which there was, there was nothing. There was nothing. And people, there was all of this debate about who would step into this market, if anyone. And nobody wanted to. And nobody wanted to. And then Malco, and Malco kind of was odd. Yeah. You know, they do sheet metal stuff and uh, they do fencing tools too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but yeah, so they decided to take this on. We were all very excited. I yeah. mean, when we were, it was, ye was it years? That this was, we were well, it was in 2017 that they announced they were doing it, right? And then it took, and, then, and they announced this was, I think, in the fall of 2017. And they said, We'll have it all by spring, right? <laughs> and they were right about that, except it was just three years later, or something. yeah. So there's just this long, and of, of course, Four it's like, later. uh, the reason it took so long is they, oh, we got a customer, hold on. Huh? So I've had it up to here with people that love this. Place. I know, it's all these customers interrupting our uh, media empire here. Right. Um, so, yeah, and so it took it took that long for good reason, though, because they weren't just walking in the factory and flipping on the switch and, and turning all the machines back on. They actually rebuilt the entire thing from the ground up. And did a good job. Yes, and... Uh, but then, fast forward, you know, years later, they send us the price list uh, of what they're going to charge us for these things. And I, I, when I saw that, I called them immediately and I was like, well, you must have sent us the wrong, right. you must have sent us for like what the retail is, is supposed to be on these. Right. And they said, no, that's, that's what your, your cost is. And then I started. Mistake number one. Then I started to worry. <laughs> um, and then I was just like, I don't, I don't think this is going to work, you know, because it, it, it seemed very expensive. Then we got the pliers, mm -hmm. and the pliers did look very nice. Yeah. And so then I thought, well, I mean, maybe there's lots of markets where people have figured out a way to make the much nicer version of things. You know, we do sell. Yep. American-made tools, and people do come here because they like the nicer stuff. Uh, but it didn't work out. Well, why do Why do you think? Why do you think it didn't work? Well, too expensive, number one. And they did, I think, a pretty bad job of setting up a dependable network of distributors. You can maybe speak to that. Well, yeah, I mean, and I, I think this is, I'm not sure they did a, it's, that's a, it's a tough market to understand what to do. You know, so you have, like, it would be great if there was an Epstein's in every single city around the country, right? Or there was a place like this. At least a contractor supply kind of place. Right. And I don't know what that network looks like anymore. Yeah. And... But also there's the temptation of the internet and the, t the temptation of Amazon yes. and they succumb to that. Yes. And so it, on paper, I'm, I imagine snap on, they also got in bed with snap on. <laughs> well, yeah. And I, yeah. So sticking with the internet thing though, I, I mean, I think that it is enticing at first to think of here is the largest distribution network. It's all online. I can just plug my product into it mm -hmm. and you know, they'll do, what they do. Um, I don't think it worked for this. You know, the, the, I think the two problems the internet has is that there's a very hard, it's very hard to build relationships 
right. through a personal interaction with a computer. And um, you don't get to discern the quality. You can't touch it. You can't touch it. And so when you make something really nice that can be perceived if you pick it up, well, if, you, if you're trying to market it mostly through online and the internet, it's just, I don't think it's going to get the traction. Right. And also, it's not going to get into the right people's hands, you know, because what you really want is you really want the people that are using the tools every day. The guy shows up the job. Hey, everybody, look what I got. Right. You want those guys to buy them. Yeah. It doesn't matter that the, a guy buys them and puts them in his garage. Right. You know, you want the guy to take them to the job site. Yeah. And then you want other guys to think they're cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um. And I don't know, I guess that that either didn't happen or it did happen and then they just decided it was too expensive. Because I think the, the other side of this is like, like people are willing to pay a certain amount for a dinner, you know, but like when it comes to like paying for dessert, like nobody's going to pay $40 for a dessert, you know. And so there, there are certain categories of things that we have a hard time spending a bunch of money on. Like... Like gloves, like things that you think of that are disposable, you know, a hundred dollar pair of construction gloves. It's like, it's, you burn through them. And, and I feel, and I don't, I just feel like locking pliers. A lot of guys look at those as a disposable item because you're using them to weld. Mm -hmm. You're using them and abusing them in all, all sorts of ways. And so, And, and when vice grip is more is much less than half the price of these things. Yeah. And by, you know, Vice Grip still got the name, even though they're all Chinese. Right. It's too, I mean, it's, it's just too bad. I was really hoping that this would work out. Yeah, it's, it's, cu yeah, and it's, it's curious why it failed. Yeah, and you would think that, I mean, of putting, I can't imagine how much money they spent. Right. But you would think that they wouldn't give up on it so quick unless it just really was not working. And, and I think I, 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 I imagine the problem is the distribution network, you know, because Amazon is not a replacement right. for all of those. Yeah. And we can say that once they announced they were shutting down, we, you know, they still had plenty of inventory and we've been buying them. So we can still get them. Yeah, they said that they're going to manufacture till the end of the year. Oh, okay. And that they had a certain amount of raw material, mm -hmm. and so the, you know they're going to try to sell everything and make. So they're still making the pliers, mm. uh, but I think they're just you know once the steel runs out, that's going to be the end of it, mm. um, and that they're going to stop production at the end of this year. Right. So of course that creates this surge of demand because now people can never get them again. Right. So now they become rare and valuable <laughs> right um you know which opens the question is anybody else out there willing to step in because it's not it's an opportunity klein channel lock right you know, yeah i don't know what the financial positions of any of those companies are but it to me it makes the most sense mm -hmm. that channel lock would step in yeah right because uh i mean they cut what have they come out with recently? They've come out with a US made line of screwdrivers that kind of looks like everybody else's screwdrivers. And then they've come out with those groove, those uh, push button pliers that are kind of trying to be the Nipix pliers. Oh yeah, that was a disaster too. Well, I mean, it didn't work for us. I don't know if they're selling them to other people. I bet they're not. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and so I don't know, to have a pair of US made channel lock locking pliers of course, they'd have. I mean, I don't know if you can refigure the way that they're made in order to get the price down. And I don't know how much of that is a scale problem, you know, which is like yeah. if you're making a hundred thousand of them, then if that drops the price to the price point it needs to be, and you just need a company to like to commit to that level of investment. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, who knows? Yeah, because I know Vice Grip, you know. They probably make easily 100,011 hours in a run. And I think they sell that many every month. Right. 
Yeah, and so how can you get how can you get up to that level of scale where you can compete? Yeah. I mean, it's it's going to take some, you know, with there's channel lock, there's right, there's I can't imagine Klein doing it. I don't know. Yeah, do they have the resources and the wherewithal to present? I I know it's it's a difficult type. It's not the same kind of manufacturing as just forging, and so I know a lot of guys steered away from it. Kind of yeah. Western, Western Forge was presented with the opportunity to do it, and they said no. They didn't want. They didn't want anything to do with that kind of manufacturing. Yeah, but then you just have that brand new factory just sitting up there, you know. Yeah. Reminiscent of SK's brand new factory that's sitting empty in Sycamore. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know what else to say about it, really. I mean, we're, we're going to continue to buy it until we can anymore. Right. I don't think there's going to be any good deals on it. Because I think the surge of demand is just going to evaporate their inventory. I think they had about a thousand... When I talked to them last week, they had a thousand of each plier, mm -hmm. and they did say that they might make more. And they they did act surprised that their announcement caused yeah. this uptick in sales, which they were like, "Man, you know, right. if we would have known <laughs> that all you needed to do to sell pliers was to tell people we can't have them anymore." <laughs> It, yeah, it's, it's mind-boggling how, how they would have spent millions of dollars to do all this and then, and then given up so quickly. Yeah. And and the planning and, and, and the decision-making that went in to commit to something that expensive to start with, when, like you said, you know, it didn't have to be chromed. That's probably a couple bucks. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. I, 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 I'm glad I'm not a manufacturer because I mean, what a difficult, complicated yeah. problem that is. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, but look at Knipex, you know, all of those tools are in that price, same price range. And they, you know, they sell nice right along. Yeah. But I, I think that's what I mean about the difference between like dinner and dessert where like people for whatever reason can justify a $60 pair of like groove joint push button pliers. Mm -hmm. But for whatever reason, that doesn't translate to this, to locking pliers yeah. for some reason. I mean, I, I sold, I sold plenty of, the, of these pliers to just, you know, tradespeople that came in and they didn't flinch when I told them how much they were. Yeah. Not a lot, but it was pretty, you know. Yeah. We had an initial surge when they first came out mm -hmm. and then, then it real, then it slowed down. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, maybe it was COVID, but I don't know. Everyone else did really well over COVID. Yeah. You know, COVID actually helped a lot of the tool sales. Mm -hmm. But it's a failure, and it's, you know, it's, it's, it's another failure of American manufacturing, and that's kind of disturbing. Sure. I, it, I think it's, a, it's hard to be in that. There's, there's my mom. It's hard to be in that middle area. I feel like, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure I've made this point before, but we've seen lots of success in terms of American manufacturing from small yeah. companies. Yeah. So, you know, companies like this Atlas 46 company yeah. that we're dealing with now, like that, that is a, a story of six American manufacturing being successful. Right. You know, the squeegee guy or right. the modified square guy. There's a lot, right? Norseman, you know, this right. climb, plan. Channelock? Yeah, but I, I feel like a lot of the, su the success stories of late have all been very small people. And, uh, yeah, Leatherworks, Enders. Yeah. And I mean, Wright is doing better than ever. Yeah. Um, but it, I, I feel like it's a hard thing to be in that middle area. Yeah. You know, because, uh, I think a lot of those people survived by the diversity of the distribution network of all of these stores like us that existed around the country. Yeah. And they no longer do. Yeah. And, and yeah, again, Amazon isn't a replacement for that right. because your product just gets lost, you know, in the 
millions and millions of products that are there. And uh, without that network of stores, I feel like it's a really hard thing. Right. All right, well, your wife is here. So she is. Um, next week, I'm going to go to write. Oh, that's right. And uh, stay tuned on that. It's so I'll, I'll, maybe I'll talk to them about this too. Yeah. I should. mean, I would like to talk to them about the Malco stuff and uh, just this problem in general. Right. Um, a quick commercial. We have a huge truckload of surplus stuff getting picked up on Friday. Oh yeah. And then when when Jory's going to write, they they've got supposedly a bunch of pallets of stuff they want to sell. Yeah, there's not as many uh, of those roll around toolboxes as. Oh. I don't think we're going to get as many of those. Yeah, just as well. But it's still a truckload of stuff. There's a decent amount of pallets of those green wood boxes again, uh, which is, those aren't super exciting, but man, they did sell a lot. But just lots of new old stock. You know, lots of, been on, yeah. You know, pliers and wrenches and stuff that have been on shelves for 30 years. Yeah. So It'll be All fun. All American made. Yeah, it should, it should be fun. Okay. All right.